Imagine if your loved ones had to stay six feet away. I don't think I take things for granted that much. Like hugging my children or my grandchildren. But going to the store and being able to see people's faces. A smile is in the eyes, but it's also in the, in the mouth. And uh, having that interpersonal, it's, it's, it's gone. I'll, I'll appreciate that when it's over. On the 25th of March, Vermont Governor Phil Scott ordered all non-essential businesses closed, and the 58,000 people of Rutland County began living a new normal. It didn't happen like an exploding, exploding volcano. It was more like a rising tide. Things were starting to close down because we were afraid. That, I guess that's the, one of the worst things about this whole episode is the lack of knowledge, the unknown. We can't predict what's going to happen. It's instability, which is reflected in the stock market and other places. Rutland County, like most areas that have been affected by the novel coronavirus to a lesser extent, experienced an influx of people, especially those who have a lake house or a summer home, who are able to leave at-risk areas and stay in Vermont. When the pandemic started, we were down in Florida at our winter house. The, the outbreak was comparable in our county in Florida to our county in Vermont. So we were still a pretty um, safe place. Um, although we started hearing that many of the rest areas and things on the way up, uh, hotels, uh, restaurants might be closed. So we decided because we go back usually in the beginning of May and um, we ended up leaving the beginning of April because we also were not sure if they would completely shut down and we couldn't travel and we wanted to be back in Vermont, I figured there was more um, things that we could do in Vermont, possibly, which isn't the case anymore now that I'm here. And, um, but we, we had a, a trip up that was fairly uneventful. Um, rest areas in Pennsylvania were closed, but all the other way they were up, and so weren't all the truck stops. So we were able to you know, come up fairly safe, and we drove 24 hours and then we quarantined once we were here. My parents came back from Florida and so they had a quarantine here in Vermont for two weeks. They weren't able to go out of the house to grocery shop or anything like that. So it was a little bit more difficult for myself because now I'm grocery shopping for not only my family that has two teenagers as well as my husband and myself. Um, but also three people in my, my parents' household. And I'm trying to only shop at once a week to lessen my contact with other people at the grocery store, um, as well as having a list from my parents and worrying because there's so many items that are not on the shelves, the flour, um, a lot of the baking supplies, and wondering, you know, am I getting the right thing for them when they ask for one thing, um, or I can't get it at all for them. Shoppers are no longer allowed to put their groceries into reusable bags over concerns of virus transmission through surfaces. Ironically, Vermont's ban of plastic bags goes into effect on July 1st of 2020. Shopping at the grocery store has definitely changed and it evolved starting in March and different things were instituted as we went along um, into the pandemic. We were lucky here in Vermont that we didn't have to stand in line. Um, my brother down in Rhode Island often had to be outside maybe sometimes even for a half hour standing in line before you could even go into the store. But here they put up signs of how many people could be in the store at once. And at one time, our store here in town did have somebody outside counting, but it never seemed to be an issue. As health concerns over the coronavirus pandemic mounted, states began to experience a shortage of medical supplies as well as overcrowded hospitals. In Vermont, one way we flatten the curve and avoid overcrowding is to wear a mask to contain droplet transmission. Many Vermonters also practice social distancing, the CDC recommendation of staying six feet apart even while wearing a mask to avoid transmitting the virus. We've experienced several changes. Rutland Regional Medical Center and other health facilities have requested that we not transport patients directly to the hospital. In other words, we're trying to discourage people from using the hospital facilities. We've had to 
institute several practices such as uh, washing our clothes immediately after we come back in, uh, using a lot of sanitizers, using a lot of uh, good hygiene practices, and uh, it really has been a, a challenge trying to, number one, get all the needed supplies because the masks were not available, and trying to find other means to keep us safe and uh, keep our patients safe during this whole process. Although most of the workforce was ordered to stay home, essential workers continued to maintain the health and mobility of their community. I was appointed as the COVID-19 officer at our facility by my boss. It seemed logical, I guess, because I'm the foreman to take the lead and try to help everyone through these times of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, for training, we were set up with a virtual conference meeting with others in the state. I think there were 50 or so people in the meeting with uh, AGC Vermont. And uh, the virtual meeting was about three and a half, four hours long. We talked about all the requirements Governor Scott had laid out for everybody who was deemed essential to stay open, what we had to do regarding hand sanitizer, social distancing, wearing masks. As far as maintaining a cleaner work environment, we have hand sanitizing wipes in all of our vehicles, our trucks, loaders, um, and we made a policy that all the operators need to wipe down either with the hand sanitizer or with the, the bleach wipes, the Clorox wipes, or we have spray disinfectant that also kills viruses like a Lysol spray. Um, they have to spray the vehicle down before they exit so it's prepared and, and clean before the next operator enters the vehicle. We've also added hand sanitizing stations in the different buildings we have. Uh, we've put up signs for outsiders to read, any delivery vehicles that come in, they know their expectations, what we expect of them um, to leave packages and they don't have to come meet us to keep the six feet of distance uh, unless they have a mask. So I'm a site interpreter, um, educator at Mount Independent State Historic Site, which is a Vermont State Historic Site. So it's a seasonal job. I usually work from May to October. So once the pandemic started, it was very uncertain and then very clear that we would not be opening on time. So that created for some of us that work at the site, we have to be hired every single year, even though I've been working there for over 20 years, I'm, I'm let go in October basically, and then I'm rehired in May. And so once May rolled around, we weren't opening, so we weren't hired. So we started wondering, we're not getting paid, but at the same time, we're not hired, so are we able to apply for unemployment? Um, and as a museum, we're one of the last places to open after uh, retail, even after uh, barber shops and salons, uh, we still weren't open. We were one of the last phases to be open. And it was um, quite a bit because are the tourists gonna come? Are we gonna have people? We wanna be open. There's been a lot of Vermonters at our site walking our trails, using the trails. We leave them open um, so they can enjoy them. At the making of this film, the Vermont State Historic Sites are set to open on July 1st. Salons and retail stores are beginning to reopen as playgrounds remain closed and silent. As Vermont schools close for the summer, students and educators reflect on changes in education and wonder what the fall will be like. We essentially had three days to put everything that we thought we knew into something that we didn't know. really really hard but luckily I used Google Classroom a lot before so most of my stuff was online anyway um, but changing how you teach things and what will work and what you can do when you're not in person it was really really difficult um, but we're getting kind of used to it now. It's difficult because sometimes like my family comes and looks over my shoulder and sees uh, what I'm doing. Which is a lot different from like a teacher doing that um, or 
showing my work to my peers because then we can collaborate and help each other on it. So it's just new and different and it's hard. Part of being a teacher is being able to have that one-on-one -on -one contact with kids and it's really hard when you only see it through a screen or through a message. Um, some students I still feel super connected with and in some ways it's made them more comfortable to reach out to me and talk to me. Um, but overall I think the kind of relationship with students has decreased some because we don't get to see them and they don't get to see us. Um, so that's really hard and hoping that can kind of change moving forward, um, keep building those relationships and strengthening them. 100% of student-teacher communications are now done through online learning sites and Google Meets. One time our computer went down and so we only had one computer to work. We only have one computer that's um, set up to do the Google Meets and sometimes the audio doesn't work real well on it. So we've had some issues uh, with technology all of a sudden it was just we're home we're schooling and it was new for everybody and it i have two teenagers a seventh grader and a, a junior and so a lot of people would think they can do it on their own which they can but it's so different for them especially if they want to be at school i miss my friends mostly i miss being able to sit with them at lunch um just see them be with them or with all my classes i also miss like seeing my teachers, just the school environment, it's gone now. It's different for me how my day goes because usually they're at school doing this, so now it's at home, um, which is also good because I can see more of their schooling, what's expected from them. And I actually kind of liked that part of it where they're in the classroom, I can't hear it, only what they tell me, and here I can hear some of the teaching. Um, so that was a good part of the homeschooling. From a student's perspective and when I've talked to my students, uh, they really like the ability to kind of move at their own pace. So if they want to move ahead or they want to um, seek out extra you know, help or do more work, they can and they can uh, learn more that way. Um, for me, I like being able to kind of the flexibility of, you know, if a student needs extra help here, we can chat when, when works for them uh, and when works for me. Um, and then using technology has been, I like using technology a lot, so it's been helpful. Um, but I think the biggest benefit for has been for those students who can move at their own pace and really like that ability to kind of um, do their education however it works for them. One thing I found is that I like not having a schedule. I can do assignments from classes in any order I want, like this class, this class, um, and at any time I want to. So there's no schedule and it's a lot more free and I like that. With the dawn of each new day, Americans learn more about what we value as a nation and as individuals. No matter who you are, the novel coronavirus has illustrated everyone's need for interaction less than six feet away. Maybe appreciate the, the ease with which we have to go to get our hair cut or, or to stop in to get a, get a coffee without having to go through masks and waiting in line and standing six feet behind. The, 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 you'll appreciate that, that part of life, the freedom we have there. I mean, they always keep saying now there's going to be a new normal, and I want to get back to hugging my grandchildren and hugging my children. But social distancing with other people may hold up a lot longer and be a lot more careful than I am, you know, I have been before. Um, and I probably will always keep toilet paper in the house. <laughs> Looking to the future, these, these things will end eventually. I'm a historian, so I, I know what the things happened in the past, and they've, they've ended. Oh, my God.